Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus one more time, resuming our playlist called Pulmonology. In the previous video, we have started talking about cystic fibrosis. Today, we'll talk about diagnosis and treatment of this horrible autosomal recessive disease. And by the way, cystic fibrosis is the most common fatal hereditary disorder in Caucasians in the United States. With that being said, now let's get started. As you know, lung diseases are divided into obstructive and restrictive. Obstructive, I cannot get the air out. Restrictive, I cannot get the air in. My lungs are restricted from filling. Obstructive include asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchiectasis, and bronchiolitis. Cystic fibrosis can lead to bronchiectasis easily. It can also lead to chronic bronchitis or bronchiolitis. In brief, cystic fibrosis is an obstructive lung disease. On your exam question, if the patient is described as having productive cough with copious amount or cup folds, it's usually written like this, cup folds of mucus, this is chronic bronchitis, cup folds of pus, this is bronchiectasis, and it's usually due to cystic fibrosis. How to diagnose cystic fibrosis? Number one, sweat chloride test, especially in children. You give pilocarpine. Pilocarpine is a parasympathomimetic. It works on the acetylcholine receptors. And since sweat glands respond to acetylcholine, they have acetylcholine receptors, we give pilocarpine to stimulate the sweat glands. In cystic fibrosis, you'll find increased chloride in the sweat. Normally, it should not be that high. In infants, if you find sweat chloride 40, it's diagnostic for cystic fibrosis. In children, and adults, sweat chloride more than 60 is diagnostic. There is another test called serum immunoreactive trypsin. Trypsin, as you know, is specific for the pancreas. Unlike amylase, which is not specific because there is also a salivary amylase, AST and ALT, again, they could happen in liver disease. In cystic fibrosis, you have increased level of serum immunoreactive trypsin. Some people call it serum immunoreactive trypsinogen, and the idea is like this. Normally, your pancreas secretes trypsinogen. Then this trypsinogen becomes trypsin in the intestine. Okay, fine. This is normal. In cystic fibrosis, um, nothing will happen from this. It's fibrosis. It's not going to secrete trypsinogen, and it's not going to reach the intestine as trypsin. So when you give the patient trypsinogen exogenously, it's not going to end up in the intestine. It's gonna stay in the blood, raising the serum level of immunoreactive trypsinogen. So, in cystic fibrosis, you have increased chloride in the sweat and increased immunoreactive trypsinogen in the serum. You can do a pancreatic biopsy. You'll find thick, proteinaceous or protein-like or protein material. It's eosinophilic because everything that's protein appears pink using H and E stain. It's filling the pancreatic duct, the ducts are dilated, and the epithelium is flattened because of the dilation, because it's distended with thick visit secretions, flattening the epithelium and pushing it aside. And of course, the ducts are surrounded by fibrous tissue, that's why we call it cystic fibrosis, because we're talking about the pancreas. The pancreas is full of cysts, and it has fibrosis. Not the lung, but the pancreas. You can do a genetic testing because, as you know, cystic fibrosis is a trinucleotide deletion. On chromosome 7, there is missing phenylalanine, or deletion of PHE508, and this is a defective CFTR. You can do an x-ray sinus view to look at chronic sinusitis. You'll find opacification of sinuses. Because of the thick secretions, the thick secretion lead to chronic inflammation. The chronic inflammation will lead to opacification. You can order a chest x-ray, it's non-specific, you'll find an obstructive lung disease such as hyperinflation, remember the barrel-shaped chest and increased residual volume leading to increased total lung capacity. Yes, that's why you see hyperinflation on chest x-ray. 
you can find reticulonodular pattern, this is not specific, or you can find bronchiectasis, as you might imagine. It might show tram tracking, which is dilation of the airways, because this is bronchiectasis, baby, because ectasia means dilation. Crowded bronchial markings extended to the periphery. Normally, they should not reach the periphery. When they reach the periphery, it means your airways are so dilated and so big that they even appear on x-ray in the periphery, and this is bronchiectasis. PFTs, you find obstructive pattern, which means high residual volume due to an increased total lung capacity. Again, barrel chest or hyperinflation. Low FEV1, FBC ratio, this is obstructive. Look at FEV1 to determine the severity. Nasal potential difference or NPD test for the sophisticated people. How to treat cystic fibrosis, aggressive pulmonary toilet, try to get rid of the sputum, oral supplementation of pancreatic enzymes and vitamins K, E, D, and A, those are the fat soluble vitamins because the pancreas is now history, cystic fibrosis in the pancreas, antibiotics because of the bacterial infection, especially pseudomonas, and you should memorize the anti-pseudomonal antibiotics. Ivacaftor is a CFTR potentiator. Lumacaftor ivacaftor combination could be used to correct the misfolded protein by Lumacaftor and potentiate the CFTR by ivacaftor. DNAs or Dornis alpha is a mucolytic, and as you know, in cystic fibrosis, there are very thick secretions. You can try inhaled short acting beta agonists such as albuterol. You can try inhaled hypertonic saline. Okay, inhaled, so these are the airways. When you inhale a hypertonic substance, it has lots of sodium. Sodium is going to pull water from the cells into the airway space. And then water is coughed out. This decreases the viscosity of the secretion, which is good. Inhaled aminoglycosides, inhaled astreonam, which is a monobactam, oral azithromycin. And if you remember COPD, we used oral azithromycin for exacerbation. Bilateral lung transplant is an option, and this is a last resort when everything hits the fan. Note, percussion can preserve the lung function in cystic fibrosis patient. Hey, doctor, I want my muscles not to get atrophied, okay? Exercise them. I want my lungs not to get dysfunctional, okay? Exercise them. Percussion, you're forcing those lungs to move and to be active instead of being stagnant waiting for the pseudomonas to beat them up. Exercise can preserve the lung function. Makes sense. Some clinical pearls for the pros. Chronic pancreatitis, amylase and lipase may or may not be elevated, but in acute pancreatitis, amylase and lipase are almost always elevated. Colonies of mucoid pseudomonas in the lung lead to thick secretions, and this is cystic fibrosis. The most common fatal hereditary disorders in Caucasian in the United States is cystic fibrosis again a horrible disease and we have talked in the previous video that it usually affects people of northern european ancestry if you are struggling to learn about bacteria such as legionella mycoplasma pseudomonas rhinovirus staph and strepton e coli check out this website called picmonic pictured mnemonics for medical students nursing students and pharmacy students and the link is in the description below they are not a sponsor of the video Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and smash like. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can get my premium videos, my post notes, my cases, my PDF notes, and even the slides of this video and every other videos organized in Dropbox folders by subject at patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.